So how to build a drop down menu from the header and how to use option sets and how to convert that into a reusable element as a professional mobile developer. This is A.B. Modi. I'm a professional mobile developer based in Boston. And in this video, I will show you how I build drop down menus using option sets and convert that into a reusable element that you can use across the different app. So without further ado, let's dive in. So I'm starting with this plain um, index page and we're going to drop, we're going to basically build a header and then we're going to convert that into a reusable element. So the first thing we need to build a header is the group and the group should be row. Well, again, you could have a column and then from there you could convert that internal elements into different um, container layouts, right? Uh, I usually like to start with a row because I know that I'm going to lay out contents across the header uh, in a row format. So let's go in and first thing we need to do is in the layout, we need to make this max width infinite so that it can go across the board uh, in the entire app. And then uh, from the minimum height, I like to keep my headers around 75, depends on the height of the entire page, right? What are you trying to do? But my standard rule of thumb is 75. Uh, it's a nice small header and then you can place things in there. All right, now um, let's relabel this group as header so we don't get confused. And I'm gonna detach the style so I can add a background front color. Uh, let's just pick blue, so there it is. Okay, um, oh, we don't need notes. Uh, let me go ahead and add a text here and I'm gonna change the color to white so we can see this. And I'm just gonna call it header. And uh, let's center this. So in the layout, when you go and just hit vertically align center, this is how it's gonna appear. Let me go ahead and add a little bit of uh, margins on the left so that it can be pushed a little over on this side. I think we should keep the height. Well, maybe we can just increase the font from 14 to 18. So it looks, uh, maybe I'll do 20. There it is. Okay, so that's a header. Now let's add a little um, icon here that is um, that can represent a profile. Uh, let's see, user, yep, we can just add that. Okay, now, the icon color, I'm gonna change that to white. Uh, let's just make, oh, that's the background color. We don't need that. We're gonna change this to white. There it is. I do want the icon to be a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna make this 55 by 55. There it is. And let's vertically align this to center. Now, as you can see here, things are kind of, um, touching with each other with the header. So I think the header, if we decrease the size, you can see that how they're sticking together. And the reason being, if you look at the layout of the row in the container alignment, everything is pushed to the left and that's why they're together. But if you spread them out, um, I like to do this best, uh, space around. Uh, I think, oh no, I'm sorry, not the space around. Which one was it? Yep, this one right here. And this is basically space in between. So what it does, it pushes both elements to the ends of uh, the group. Uh, we added some margins here on the left 20. And that's why it's um, looking pretty good here. So let me go ahead and add a little bit of a margin on the right side so that this looks centered. Now the goal here is to build a drop down that can appear as a menu um, for the web apps, right? Um, so let's First, go ahead and convert this into the reusable element. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is right click and then um, you click on convert to a reusable element. I'm just gonna call it header and that will convert into a reusable element. And what it does, it takes you to this separate page because reusable element has its own page uh, and it kind of resides here under the page. Uh, now, the way I like to do the drop downs, I like to use um, this thing here called group focus. Group focus basically ties to a specific element and it only appears under that element. So uh, let me go ahead and drop this group focus right here. Now, when you first drop it, it's just gonna go into the left um, upper corner. Uh, the container layout, I like to keep it as column so that we can stack things on top of it. Let's make a width of no more than 200 here. Height is perhaps too long. So I'm just gonna make it 180. There it is. Now we need to define 
the reference element on which element this group focus should tie to or appear under, right? And in this case, I wanted to appear this under the icon. So we're going to go here and put it under the icon. As you can see, it automatically adjusts under the icon. Now, as you can see, the group focus is moved towards the right because that's its default settings. Uh, the offset on the top and left, as you can see, it's zero and zero. So if you need to push this a little bit down, all you have to do is maybe just add a little bit here. And there we go. So now the top part, as you can see, uh, has been adjusted by 10. And then on the left, now this is something you just have to play around with. Uh, there is no easy drop in, um, like hold and drop to kind of adjust those. So uh, it's basically an eyeball. Uh, eyeballing, if you want to move things to the left, it, it has to be negative numbers. So you're going to go here and let's try it with 100. There we go. I, what I want to do is I want this corners to come right under this icon. So I'm just going to keep adding numbers until I get the desired results. Uh, not enough. Let's see, 70 perhaps? Oh, that's too much. So how about 50? Yep, there it is. So that's good enough for me. Um, I do want this to come right under the header. So why don't I just go ahead and add 12 here? And there it is. Perfect. Now let's add some background colors to this as well. So I'm going to make this blue um, as we're keeping that as a theme. Um, Perhaps this is too bright, so I'm just going to move this down here. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, now what we need to do is we want to display menu options such as profile, settings, logout, and so on, right? So the way I like to do and provide the options uh, for the menu is I like to create option sets. Now, option sets are great when you have a predefined um, uh, we call the values that you want to display uh, on multiple places, such as uh, header is one place, and perhaps you want to show the same value into a mobile menu, right? Um, so I'm just going to go here and create menu options. Now, I like to label them as OS so that when you look through the dynamic values, um, it's easy to filter between what's option sets and what's coming from database. So I label this as a professional mobile developer as OS, so I know it's option sets. Uh, let me go ahead and add some options here. So I'm going to add profile. Uh, I'm going to add settings. And let's just add one more thing, account, and then log out, right? So these are the options now we want to display in here so that when a user clicks on this icon, they see this drop down uh, across the board. So uh, let's go ahead and select. Um, well, first thing we need to do is we need to add a repeating group, right? So the repeating group allows you to add those dynamic values. Uh, with the And as you can see here, this is what I was talking about. When you select the type of content, when you label it as OS, now you know it's an option set. So you can select the type of content as menu options, data source, I would like to select that as all menu options so that we can render all the displays. Now, by default, it says set fixed number of rows. We don't want that, of course, right? Because if in future we add more options, we want them to automatically appear under that menu. And that's another great advantage of having option sets and repeating group that as you add new options, it automatically appears and you don't have to restructure the entire drop down menu. Uh, the minimum height of the row, I don't believe we need this more than. 45, so I'm going to leave it at 45. Um, number of columns, we just need one. And um, yeah, that's good enough. And show all items immediately because we do want that to render right away. Um, all right, so once that's been laid out, let's uh, display this sales container as row because you want to add things in a row format. Uh, the max width. Um, I want to keep it at 200 because that's the size of the focus group. If you remember, um, if we go to this group focus, and I think we should relabel this as a drop down menu. All right. And so the height of, I mean, not the height, sorry, the width is 200. And that's why we want this uh, repeating group, which is inside that focus group to be 200. Uh, the minimum height, um, I would definitely leave it as same as the focus group. So it's not uh, coming out. So it's 180 here. So I'm going to keep it at 180. 
And then, of course, you can, um, as you add more options, it can come down um, as needed. Uh, also, I'm going to detach the style so I can remove the um, the lines in between. You're going to see those lines coming in by default in the repeating group. Uh, we can leave the lines if you want, but let's change the color to white so it's easy to identify, as you can see. There it is. Okay, now that we have laid out our option sets and we have this op um, repeating group in here, why don't we go ahead and add a element? So I'm going to add a text element, which the first thing I want to do is I want to change this to white so it's uh, easily readable. Uh, and then, of course, let's change this height to 35. Um, I do want this to be centered, so I'm going to keep this vertically aligned in the center. And I want text to be center as well. So there is an option here that says center the text vertically. When you click on that, there it is. It comes up uh, nice and clean. Uh, and then, of course, let's add some paddings to it. So left, I'm going to add 10 and right to the 10. So it's, it's kind of center. It's not adding to the or not uh, placing to the edges, which kind of looks funky when you from the UI perspective. Okay, uh, now we want this to be a dynamic value. And as we can tell that this text element, if you look at under the elements tree, this text element, which I should say menu options, is going to reside under the repeating group. So repeating group being a parent, the data is coming from the parent group. So we're going to insert the dynamic value and we're going to select that current sales menu options and its display so that we can show the uh, the options of the menu, if that makes sense. Now, I, I do want, and now, okay, so before we do that, let's see how this looks like, but we also need to trigger this, right? So we need to make sure um, that this menu appears when someone clicks on this icon, or maybe at the hover. Uh, let, let's do the click one, so that's easy. So we're gonna go here on the icon, click Start Edit Workflow, and the first thing we want to do is display show a group focus drop down menu. That's all. That's all we got to do. So if someone clicks on the icon, all we're doing is show that focus group, um, the drop down group. And so there it is. Now let's review this, how it looks going back to our index page. Now, I don't believe this is a reusable element. Nope. So let me go ahead and delete that and drop the reusable element that I created into this header. And there it is. And let's go ahead and preview. All right, so here it is. We have our preview. There it is. So when you click, or um, even if you click outside, it disappears. That's how Bubble have layout the uh, focus groups. Um, so there it is. Um, and as you can see, we have profile settings account. Now, how do we know if we're selecting this? So I think from the UI perspective, it makes sense that we uh, highlight um, those buttons on the on the hover, right? So why don't we go ahead and quickly add that? So I'm going to go into um, the reusable element that we created. Oops. Okay, one correction in the video. I've been keep saying it focus group, but it's supposed to be group focus. Uh, but you get the picture, right? Okay, so uh, group focus is now we want to add a hovering feature here. So let's go ahead and go into the conditionals and add this condition saying when this text is hovered, we want its background color to change. So we're gonna just get background style, make it flat color. We're gonna select the background color as white, and let's also change its font color so that we can read it properly. That's it. So all we have to do is add a condition in one place in repeating group, uh, and now that's of course applies across the board. So let's go ahead and preview this and see how it looks. So here's our group, and there it is. Works like a charm. All right, so I hope this video helps. If you have a specific request on how to do certain things in Bubble, as a professional Bubble developer, please do leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to record a little video and share that with you guys. All right, hope this helps.